Hello, this is Breuer, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play series for Civilization VI. Uh, we're continuing our kind of, I guess, A to Z run, going through all of the leaders alphabetically, and we are up to Eleanor of Aquitaine. I'm choosing to play as England because we just played as France a few civilizations ago, uh, and the next England won't be until the very end of the series. Um, so we're going to play as Eleanor of Aquitaine. Plus, I, I think she's kind of interesting. I think it would be kind of fun change of pace to try something a bit different with the way her stuff works we'll get into that here in just a moment but uh obviously deity difficulty standard map size standard game speed all that's going to change so stay the same i mean i have not beaten her the game as eleanor of aquitaine or eleanor of uh what's the other one eleanor of oh they're both eleanor of aquitaine just once for france i haven't beaten the game as either of them um but um, I'm not going to be playing, so, so I'm not going to be playing as any game modes or anything like that. This is going to be just a standard game. I'm going to be playing on the continents and islands. Now, I, I kind of went back and forth on this. England is very good on coastal stuff because even no matter which England you're playing, they both get the Royal Navy Dockyard and they both get sea dogs. Cool. Uh, and obviously the workshop of the world gets into some harbor stuff. And again, I'll get into a lot of that in here in just a moment. So I do want lots of water. Now, Eleanor, she kind of wants to have ability to get cities within nine tiles of her, right? Um, so too much water could make this a bit challenging. I'm hoping that throwing in the continents and islands, and islands instead of just going straight up archipelago will allow us to have a good amount of water, but still a big enough land masses to do our, our thing. So let's see what happens. Uh, here is the game random seed and the map random seed if you want to play along. Without further ado, uh, let's get into the let's get into the game. All right, I skipped a little bit of the Sean Bean there, or I guess I skipped all of it. So apologies if you like hearing those, but I wanted to kind of get right into this. Uh, before I jump too far into this, I do want to ask, since this is the first episode of a brand new series, please, if you like this type of content and want to see more of it, it really helps the channel out. If you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification so you know when these types of videos go online. Uh, hit the like, obviously, if you like this video, and comment below. And uh, that always helps the algorithms and all the stuff. I don't try to ask too often, although I probably should ask more often, uh, because quite frankly, I want this channel to grow and I want this channel to get bigger and better and whatever, because I really do enjoy this a lot and I do appreciate all the support I already get. So, Eleanor of Aquitaine, England. Uh, let's jump into the England stuff first. Uh, let me get my face out of the way temporarily so that we can see everything that's on here. Uh, first off, we have the Workshop of the World. Iron and coal mines accumulate two more resources per turn, which is potentially a big deal. Uh, I mean, strategic resources, your limiting factor is how much can you have and getting some early iron and coal could help us out quite a bit. We shall see. She does get 100% production towards military engineers. Uh, so that's gonna help us out with, you know, dams and and uh, the, uh, what I'm trying to say, the seawalls or whatever they're called. Totally, totally forgot the name, but you know, all, all the things that military engineers can kind of help build up uh, as well as the ability to put down, if we want to put down airfields, things like that, whatever it is. Uh, having just more protection towards the military engineers. It's a nice to have. It's not going to be, I think, majorly game-changing, but still kind of cool. Military engineers, we do receive two extra charges. Now, that's maybe slightly more game-changing in some ways. Uh, I don't usually use a lot of military engineers, but having a couple, a couple extra charges will help us rush out some of those types of uh, buildings, things like that, a lot easier. Do they help build aqueducts as well? I can't remember. Uh, buildings that provide additional yields when powered receive plus four of that yield. That's pretty helpful. Um... That's going to help across the board, right? That's going to help uh, gold. It's going to help culture. That's going to help science. Anything, anything that needs power is going to get extra of that yield. So that makes her very well-rounded in that regard with that ability. Uh, we also get plus 20% production towards industrial zone buildings, uh, which is going to help us build up our industrial might very, very quickly. Uh, it's going to feel a little bit similar to probably America. And since we did go very heavy industrial zone with them as well. And then harbor buildings increase strategic resource stockpiles by plus 10 on a standard speed. So we'll get a little more stockpile to make up for or to kind of help hold all that extra resources we get honestly workshop of the world is a very chaotic bonus it's all over the place strategic resources military engineers power to give you extra yields across you know across everything uh stuff for the industrial zone buildings themselves harbor you know i mean there's a lot here essentially just makes a lot of stuff just better so workshop of the world just make a lot of things better i mean uh then we have the sea dog which takes the place of the privateer. 
Uh, the big difference here is that it has the chance to capture enemy defeated enemy ships, which is awesome. Uh, I have actually I have actually played as England before somewhere back in the history of my YouTube. You can go check that out. But that was obviously with um, uh, what's her name? Oh, no. Who's the other England? My mind is just Victoria. Victoria. So you can go check that one out uh, if you want. But sea dogs are a lot of fun and being able to build up our naval force by means of other people's naval forces is just really cool. So we might try to take advantage of that a little bit. We'll see what we have, what happens. And then finally, we have the Royal Navy Dockyard. It's a district obviously unique to England. Um, removes the movement of penalty for embarking and disembarking to and from this tile. Can't remember if that's part of base harbors or not, but we do get plus one movement for all naval units built in the dockyard. And we get plus two gold and plus four loyalty per turn when built on a foreign continent. So. If we are able to flip loyalty of cities, we'll get to that in just a moment, and get them to our side, then we will be able to keep them on our side because we can put down a Royal Navy dockyard, especially if they're on another continent, obviously, uh, and be able to get extra loyalty from that. So that is a lot of fun, a lot of cool stuff. Now for Eleanor. Court of Love. Great works in Eleanor cities each cause minus one loyalty per turn in foreign cities within nine tiles. Now, one thing I do want to point out, most of the time when you see something within nine tiles, it's a drop off. It's like starts at like, you know, a bit of loyalty here and then or stuff like that. Um, and it kind of drops off as you get further, further away. I think that's a, our capital, like it emits loyalty. And I think it drops off the further away from the capital you are. Um, I think that's correct. Am I making that up? I thought that is that is another thing. Correct me if I'm making that up. I thought I remember that being a thing suddenly, but I'm suddenly panicking and forgetting if that's actually the thing or not. Whatever the case is, this one is not a drop off. Whatever great works we have, it's just going to put more loyalty pressure on those other cities within nine tiles. Uh, I'm hoping that nine tiles is far enough to get across some of the water gaps. We'll see. If not, we might have to do some actually good old-fashioned concrete to get at least initial foothold and then go through loyalty the rest of the way. My goal for this playthrough is, I don't know if we're going to go full domination, but we're going to go a lot. We're going to take a lot of cities. And my hope is that pretty much all the cities, ideally, all the cities that we take will be taken peacefully through this loyalty flip. Uh, Cause I think that would be kind of cool to take literally every city possible uh, peacefully. Now, I don't know if we could take the capitals. If we can't take the capitals, we might have to take those by fours. But can you imagine if we just surround the capitals with all of our cities and then go from there? It is gonna require us to have a lot of great works and a lot of things that can hold great works in those border cities. But we'll be able to move our great works around to kind of, you know, make that work, right? Now, the good thing is um, if we have we can have lots of cities within nine tiles. Nine tiles is plenty of space to put quite a few cities and we can fill all of those with loyalty stuff. It's going to be cool. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to find out. Um, but let's go ahead and jump right into this and see what happens. I apologize for the very long intro, but there's actually a lot going on with England here and we shall see what happens. Okay, I'm getting the pop-ups for G a Gathering Storm because this is my first brand new game. Um, can I close all that? Okay, let's close that stuff. This is my first brand new game with my new computer. My other game was a load from a save, so it didn't have all the tutorials. So if I get into those, just bear with me, because it's just that's the only reason. Um, uh, looks like my you my map is a little large. I did bump up since the last episode. I bumped up the uh, I found the XML file that allowed me to bump up the UI to make it the same as what it was before the new computer. Um, and if you're not sure what I'm talking about. I have a brand new gaming computer since the last time I did a series of Civilization. And uh, so lots of stuff has changed. So let me get in here and what is it? Graphics? No. Interface. Let's drop the minimap size just to make sure it fits. Right about there looks probably okay. Confirm. All right, good. I just want to make sure it fits next to my, my head over here. And that looks okay. All right, England. Um, we're not near water. <laughs> uh, does England not have a coastal bias? This is strange. A bit unexpected. I mean, it's not the end of the world. Like, her capital doesn't have to have water, but obviously we do want to get water pretty quickly. We do have bananas. Oh, I want my yields. I like, I like having the yields up. I know some people don't like having the yields up. I personally... I like having them up most of the time, if at all possible. Um, we're gonna go ahead and turn off all, turn all the labels on because that's sometimes gonna help us give us hints about who's nearby. 
and we'll go from there. All right. I don't want to settle in place. I'm going to move down to here, be next to the bananas, be on a Plains Hills tile, be next to the river. I mean, this is this is actually a really good spot right here overall. Have lots of wood nearby, or lumber and stuff like that nearby that we can chop. Um, but we do want to move you as well to see if we can find anything. Now, is this a lake or is this proper coast? This is coast. So we are not too far. In fact, moving down one, we'll put this close enough to put a harbor over there. So that is a good first move. I'm happy with that. We're going to lose a turn of uh, development, but it is worth it to get on the Plains Hill style. Alright, so there's London. We got diamonds nearby. That's actually an extremely good tile early on. All that extra gold. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to come up here and get the goody hut. Okay, what do we want to go for? Um, I mean, obviously, long term, we do need to get things that can hold great works. So that could be wonders. Although wonders, we can't uh, those are very somewhat limited, right? Like we, we, um, we could put, uh, entertainment districts, sorry, uh, theater districts in all of our cities based on population, of course, but, um, in theory, you could put those in all the cities. So we want to get a lot of those out. The wonders, if we can get them up, that'd be cool, but it's not going to help us quite as much because once we pass outside the range of a nine tiles of the wonder, then it doesn't help us anymore. Uh, I mean, other than <laughs> what a normal wonder normally does. Uh, if we can get... The Pantheon that allows us to have great works inside religious buildings, that would be awesome. And then there's a couple, um, isn't there a merchant that allows us to have great works inside banks? So things like that would be really, really useful for us uh, going forward. Uh, oh, yeah, I was going to check research. I mean, we do want to find them, get the diamonds going, and obviously finding where the iron is could be useful as well. I think I'm going to start with mining. We will get and get that going. Plan on getting down here, getting the mine, the diamonds pretty much as soon as possible. And we're going to go right into a scout right away. We expect that we're on a decently sized uh, landmass, so we're trying to get that set up pretty quickly here will be useful. Now, we do have a builder already, which is awesome. I'm going to sit on it for a minute, though, because we can't really do much with it right this second. Where are we actually expanding? We are going to expand to there, which is good. Uh, you are working the bananas. You are. That's good. All right, so we are getting some coast. That is That is comforting. I was a little bit worried at first. I don't want to move you down there by yourself right now. We'll probably wait till we get the scout and move you down there with the scout in, the, in tow. I mean, I guess we'll come down here just to see what else is down this way. grow at the same time we get our scout which is nice all right let's just link you guys together just just for a little bit until we can kind of get some things set up um i mean i do really kind of want to go right into another settler as soon as possible actually yeah i think we do we go right into a settler. we're gonna get i mean we we do want to get a lot of cities through loyalty pressure but we kind of need our first city at least a couple cities to get a good foundation going. Uh, we got how many turns until border growth? Two turns. So we can go ahead and we've got four turns on the mining. We'll just go ahead and move you over there. Let you sit there for a bit. We could move the scout off just to kind of do a little bit of scouting nearby. I'm going to go ahead and move you out here just to get some more vision. We do have at least another landmass. It's potential that it could be part of the same one. We'll find out. Uh, we can go ahead and hook you and the scout can go ahead and move down here. And still be doing some coverage. Got some elephants. That's actually really useful as well. So we got lots of good luxuries nearby. That's that's convenient. More elephants. Amber. This is not bad. Kind of happy with this for the most part, I think. It's good that we're going to get another pop before you, our settler comes out, so that'll help us stay relatively large up there. Um... And one more turn on you. Who deserves more credit than the Okay. Um we're gonna swing down here just to see what's at the edge there. There's a rainforest here. Do we wanna wait till we get bronze working? I mean it might not be a bad idea to wait till we get bronze working. So we can get the production boost from the rainforest. 
Which means in the meantime, we want to move you somewhere else instead. I mean, we could just come over and hook up the mine. Yeah, why not? Let's do that. Alright. Not really much to see over here, but that's alright. Okay, got some crabs. Just want to get the mine hooked up. We're not working that. We're not going to be working it for a little while, but... Makes it a little bit better. I mean, sorry, we already got this tile that's basically as good as well anyway. Got the warrior back up here to help escort the settler. Um, hmm. Yeah, I guess we're just chilling until we get some more stuff. Our diamonds down there. It is not wisdom. There's our code of laws. We definitely want to take the faith. And I'm going to go ahead and take the discipline. We're going to have to run into barbarians pretty soon, I would imagine. I guess it's safe to just move you down there and sit you there. Like the sound effect audio is a little bit high. Sound effects. We'll drop that down a bit. All right. Um, speaking of barbarians, there is one right there. I mean, I'm kind of okay with this down here. Get this next to elephants, another luxury. We're on the river. It's another Plains Hills Tower, right? So, crabs, one, two, three, would be close enough. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm actually okay with this. I mean, in theory, it should be still safe because our, bar, our scout just came through here. All right, those are both done. Let's go ahead and get us a slinger out. Make sure we're covered there. We're still waiting on you, my friend. You're going to move up to here. We do need to kill some barbarians to get the boost for bronze working, which hopefully will happen once we chase this guy down. Somebody helped attack. There we go. Lahore. What do you got, my friend? Uh, Nihang. Oh, yeah, I remember those. Those are pretty strong. Those are actually really strong units. Assuming he took out the barbarian encampment up here, which is unfortunate. Let's get us, let's go and get us a monument, get a little bit of culture coming in. We'll then do a settler probably after that. I think you're just going to go right into a builder. I mean, I could move you down here to hook up to elephants, except we don't have the camps at the moment. Probably we'll swap to the camps when we need to, though. Another city-state. Hunza. Trade routes generate gold for every five tiles of travel. That's pretty useful. Yeah, we'll go ahead and move down here. Get that hooked up here in a little bit. I'm assuming we're going to get that before we get bronze working. 
I mean, if we start killing more barbarians, then I might change that. Hmm. We did just get a notice for barbarian encampment. So, right down here. Okay. Cool. So, you need to come down this way, my friend. As do you. You come through the city. We'll maybe stop you for a minute to heal. Doesn't mean this builder is going to be in trouble if we're not careful. So, builder needs to go inside the city. Also means we're going to start getting some... I mean, he's right here, so obviously he's going to go back and report right away, which is very unfortunate. Actually, the recon unit might be kind of helpful here. Kind of get a little bit of spying on what's going on here. I'm sure it's going to start popping out some units here very, very soon. But being able to see what's going on is always nice. We could put a farm down. It's probably okay. I mean, there's not a ton of food here anyway. So getting a farm down. Just to give us something extra and then we'll do this. Hopefully this will be our third tile there. Keep you in the city till we're ready for you. You're just going to heal up a tick while you're here, just keeping an eye on stuff. All right, so there's Tundra. So we are presumably near the southern edge of the map. Uh, we do want to move off craftsmanship. Do we even have any idea of any continents yet? No. Of course, it's that kind of encampment. Ah, this, that is really bad. Oh, not sorry. I didn't mean to move you there. I meant to move you there. We need another warrior. is really bad thankfully a scout in a on a hill in the woods is pretty strong but hmm actually what we want to do is we want to move you back one we want to pull them into towards the city so that I can shoot you with a slinger All right, you're about to set up, so we're in need for right now. Okay, this is fine. It's going to pillage that, but I mean, it is what it is. If there are no dogs in heaven... Then when I die, I want to go. All right, we want to try and get this guy within kill range because we still want to get to kill with the slinger. Don't know if that's going to happen or not. I didn't build that. I guess because he still had health. He was full health. Um... We've killed two barbarians, though. That's good. So we'll get bronze working here momentarily. Let's start working on archery. It's 
Let's go and get another settler, I guess. That's weird. I don't know why this map scrolled like that. Okay, good. The uh, horseman did not kill himself. So we can take the kill with you. I'm also interested in gets his bronze working, gets the boost for that. That is great. You can move into there. Builder, one of the builders needs to move up. Uh, camera view, we lose movement if we go there or not. So we're going to not risk it. We're going to move the one with the most builds upwards. I don't know that we'll need the Spearman, although we could purchase one. I think we'll be okay. I think we're going to get through this just fine. I was saying, let's just start getting horse archers. <laughs> Which I should have... I should not have put that in my head, but it's... I guess we figured it was inevitable, right? Um, I mean, the horsemen are going to kill themselves against us no matter what we do, so we're going to make sure you focus on that. Gets us a promotion. You're just going to fortify here. I mean, they're, they're going to come after us and attack themselves on us, so I'm not super worried about this too much, I don't think. I figured that was going to happen eventually. All right, we do have the promotion, which we do want to go ahead and take. Oh, I didn't move off foreign trade. It's fine. We want, we're going to get the craftsmanship for sure. Um, and foreign trade was the one that was the furthest away at the moment. So that's okay. Hmm. I mean, we definitely want to do this. I want to get rid of this guy. Which I guess kind of makes that a mostly smart move. Not a lot of food in production, to be honest, but I guess it's better than nothing. That's the positive aspect of trade. <sighs> All right, we still want to get our pan down, so we're going to leave that one in, and we still need this, so nothing's going to change here. I really like tortoise. We have to go after cities and stuff, which we're not going to try and do too much, but it's, it's kind of helpful in this current situation because of the archers. Oh, because that one's pillaged. We don't get any credit for that. That's unfortunate. Um, we should be able to come up here and hook up the silk. I mean, we are exactly in a dark age. I'm sorry, I was looking. I had this backwards, but we are very much in a dark age, which is kind of okay. I do like going Dark Age into a Heroic Age uh, where possible. The Silk 
only live in woods. Yep, yeah, okay. I think this guy turned into an archer. It's going to be really helpful for the situation. So many units. May the forces of evil become... Worried if I move him up here, he'll just die to the too many horsemen. I think we just leave you there. We're gonna leave you kind of where you're at. You might take some damage from the horsemen, but I think we'll be okay. Uh, we want to move up to plantations, though. So. We'll hook up the silk. Getting the archers. Going to be a game changer here. Pantheon, nice. We'll go ahead and select this, and then we're going to call it an episode there. I usually go a little bit longer in the first episode. Normally I try to keep these around 25 minutes, but I like to get into some stuff with the first one. Um... We definitely want to grab... It's not a pantheon. It's, it's the uh, it's a religious belief that gives us extra places to put great works. Great builders are nice. City growth is nice. Lots of faith coming in would be helpful for getting more uh, great people. Truth be told, though, I think we want Divine Spark. Getting more just great works and stuff like that coming in from the writers, plus getting the extra points for other things, is usually pretty nice for the pl plath we're going down, right? Yeah, I think we're going to go Divine Spark in this case. All right, we're going to put a cut in there when we come back. We still got to defend Manchester here, which I'm not super worried about, but we'll figure it out. I did mean to put the builder here before I went to there. That was a mistake, but that's okay. Um, I guess in the interim, since we're waiting on stuff, we can go ahead and move this guy down there. But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm kind of excited. We got another settler. We're going to have three cities here, and then we'll be able to start kind of going from there as far as... I don't see any other civilizations at the moment, which is going to make this strategy a little interesting, but... We'll figure it out. It will let us, hopefully let us establish ourselves quite a bit. And then when it's time for us to meet other civilizations, we'll be in a good position to start flipping their cities. And that's going to be the goal. But I do appreciate you guys watching. May God bless you. And I hope you join me again next time. Thank you and goodbye. I wanted to give a special shout out to the following channel members. Thank you so much for supporting the channel.